Hi, I'm Dan Olson, Senior Editor of Volleyball for Referee. We're excited to bring you this video to help you learn about the toughest calls that every volleyball official makes. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned referee, this video is designed for you. I'll guide you through the four sections of this video and give you plenty of opportunity to learn at your own pace. We'll be focusing on alignments, ball handling, net play, and in or out calls. Each of these sections can be viewed separately at your own pace or as a full unit to help you become better at making these challenging calls. We have leading experts in volleyball officiating with me here today to help dive deep into these topics. Let's get started. The first topic we are going to get to is alignments. We have Todd Korth, Director of Training for the Professional Association of Volleyball Officials, here to guide us through this topic. Thanks, Dan. Tracking rotations, serve-receive patterns, judging positional faults, and correctly identifying back row players tends to be one of the biggest challenges, even for the most experienced referee. In this section, we will give you the basic understanding of volleyball strategy, as well as a review of the two most common offenses. We will also take you through the six serve-receive rotations based off of the setter's position and where the most common alignment issues may occur. Before we get started, here are the NFHS rule references that apply to positioning. Receiving teams use a variety of serve reception patterns to put the best passers in position to receive the serve to get the setter closer to the target position to run the offense on the second contact or to move the hitters into the best possible position to attack the ball with the third contact. There are many options for teams to utilize out of this base offense, but typically outside hitters attack sets near their antenna while the middles run quick attacks near the middle of the court. For most teams, the outside hitters are the primary passers, but teams may also use a combination of the libero and opposite as primary passers. Usually, when the middle hitter rotates to the back row, the libero replaces that player in the back row. The front row middle player is rarely in the serve receive, so they can be in a good position to be ready for a quick attack. The first of the two most common formations is the 5-1. This formation has one setter and five attackers. In a 5-1 offense, each rotation is referred to based on the setter's original position. Rotation 1 has the setter in the right back position as the team rotates. The second of the two most common formations is the 6-2. This formation has two players sharing the setter role, with the player in the back row handling the setting responsibilities while the front row player is a hitter. This gives the offense six hitters and two setters. For the rest of this section, we'll be focusing on the 5-1 formation. The basic positions of the players are left front, center front, and right front, and then left back, center back, and right back. The front row players are required to have a portion of at least one foot closer to the center line than their corresponding back row teammates. The right side players must have at least one part of one foot closer to the right side than their adjacent teammate, and the left side players must meet the same requirements with respect to the left sideline. One of our two's responsibilities in a match is to track all the players on the court. NFHS rules require the R2 to use a lineup card as a tool for tracking player positions. It can be a challenge, constantly requiring the second referee to look at the card, track servers, identify front and back row players, and to determine if the players are in a legal alignment. It boils down to positioning of the player's foot or feet at the moment the ball is contacted for service. Let's take a closer look at rotation three, with the setter occupying the left back position. As you can see on this play, number 11 is the setter. She pushes up number 17 in order to get as close to her setting position as possible. 
That creates a possible overlap situation with number seven, since they are both back row players. Number 11 moves to her spot after contact for service. Knowing the player's starting positions is key to spotting potential problems and formations. It is also important to know who is in the front and back row. In this case, number 17 is left front, 13 is center front, and 12 is right front. 11 is left back, 7 is center back, and 2 is right back. That allows you to know what player is allowed to do in the rotation. In this set, the blue graphic shows three players stacked to the left side of the setter with the left side and middle hitters. The setter is in green and occupies the left front position near the net. She is not in position to receive the serve, but has a direct path to the right front target area where the ball will be passed to by a back row player. The player farthest from the net in the stack occupies the right front position on the court, but is the outside left front hitter. It places her in an ideal position for an attack. The passer on the team covers most of the court. The team may use two or three passers in this formation. So let's recap. The R2 is allowed to use a lineup card as a tool for tracking player positions. The front row players are required to have a portion of at least one foot closer to the center line than their corresponding back row teammates. The right side players must have at least one part of one foot closer to the right side line than their adjacent teammate, and the left side players must meet the same requirements with respect to the left side line. Thanks, Todd. Now that you have seen the chapter, let's review your knowledge. Question 1. Team B's back row attacker jumps with one foot touching the attack line and contacts the ball while it is completely above the top of the net. Team A's collective block, which includes Team A's back row setter, touches the ball and then the ball lands in Team A's court. What is the correct decision by the referee? Is it A. Double fault B. Illegal back row block on Team A with Team B winning the rally, C, illegal back row block on Team B, Team A wins the rally, or D, ball in, Team B wins the rally? The answer is A. It's a double fault by both teams and results in a replay of the rally. That concludes the video. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. For more information and educational materials, please visit us at Referee Training Center dot com slash volleyball. Have a great season.